Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I have to say a Merry, Merry Christmas to you. Thank you for all this Keeping It Hope TV. And thank you for supporting us this entire year. I hope you're having a lovely uh, festive season together with your loved ones. We celebrate Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the reason for this season. So make sure that Christ is born in your heart. Make sure that you are talking about the goodness of Christ and make sure that you are living out for Christ and you're not ashamed of him. And we are grateful to be here once again. And today I have the privilege and I'm honored to be interviewing or rather talking to my colleague, Jessica Gendi. And, you know, I'm actually just telling her that um, I think I know her story halfway. Now she tells me I don't even have an inch of an idea of her story. So thank you, Jessica, for coming in. You're most welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. hosting me, Maria. Wow, you are such an inspiration, Jessica. And I'm not going to get into so much because that's why you're here to share with us. So tell us a little bit more about yourself before we go to your childhood and to your life. Just who is Jessica? How many children, if you have any? Do you have a family? Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, my name uh, is Jessica Gendi. I have a middle name, which is Ahoka. I was given, I was born on the way, by the way. Ah. Yeah, my mama gave birth to me on the way. Hence, now that's a little name that uh, shows that you're born on the, on the way. I have a family. I'm married. Together we have four children. Um, and yes, uh, I'm a professional. <laughs> I thank God. And uh, I mean, what else? Yeah, yeah so pretty now, much that God. is that is it. So tell us a bit more about how you were born. I mean, born on the way. I mean, how you were born, your childhood was like what so tell us a little bit more about that um i remember so well uh, about my childhood uh, uh part of it was not so good though many people didn't know about that uh, i'm the third born we are the first girl so i'm the third girl so being the third girl the child who follows me is a boy um normally my dad comments that uh no, normally says that I like I'm like I'm the one who brought the blessing because you know during that time girl was not so much uh, you know valued yeah so of course my mom went through a lot during their marriage um, until the point when she was expecting me no yes um, I was young but she was expecting my younger my immediate brother yeah my, my immediate follower so during that time she was sent away because she was giving birth to girls. Our first one was a girl, second was a girl, and now I was a girl. So sent away by your dad? <sighs> by our family. Uh, our family members, they forced my dad. Uh, you see, the way the influence is so much on the husband, until now he has to release you as a wife. So my mom was sent away. She went back to their home. Uh, I was very young, barely a year, I think, or two years. So when she went back there, my grandma, who is her mom now, told her, just go back. If you give her to another girl, come in and live with me. So uh, luckily when she, should I say, luckily when she went back, she gave birth to our brother. And now that bore, you know, happiness into the, into the family. Yes. Yeah. So that was during that time. So, so how, how was, so, so basically your, your birth was not so joyful I, it wasn't. I, I i'm trying to pick that it wasn't it wasn't because now imagine being the third born and being the girl like seemingly the last girl before a boy um, i'm trying to imagine what my mom went through because she felt it even back at our home with the relatives so it must have been <laughs> so hard for her being that i was a child maybe i would not really have understood but of course you get stories later on when you grow up that's true yeah so now you're in the world I mean, no, there's no. no there's no going back no. so how is your life how did your life develop like? yeah yeah so i remember very well my parents received christ when i was very young um i remember because my dad at some point had a church and uh, i i used to love church and i used to love everything that is done in the church i used to love praying actually i would say i developed praying or a prayer life through my you know seeing my parents pray and um so when my parents received Christ, I used to hear, you see the way the testimony, there's a testimony section in a church. And my dad being a bishop, of course, he also had to testify at some point. And I, I heard that he was sick to a point of bedridden. And at that point where there was no 
no solution, like there was no treatment he could be given that could heal him. And so at that point is when he met Jesus, when he was being, t uh, he was being uh, rode on a bicycle. Just to look, uh, at, at that point he asked those people, now that it's hard, can you look for me a church where I can go and just be prayed for because it, it was too much. Yeah. So when they, re when they were looking for a church, they had, you see the way congregation, you just know there's the church, people are worshiping and praising. Ah, and it's so all, along the way. Along the way, and he told the person, let's branch here. So he was taken there, he was not able to walk. So upon there, uh, he received Christ, and so he went back walking. That is how wow. he was saved. Wow. Yes. Wow, through <laughs> a miracle. A miracle, it was a miracle. And so he was saved and he, he had, he had been walking, you know, the journey. So I remember when I was very, really, very young, and also I had my mom at some point. She, she was also testifying, and she was also sick. Uh, she was, um, she could not walk for a period of six months. She was taken to a witch doctor where she stayed for months because she could not walk. It found when she had already given birth to my, my now my second sister, whom I'm, whom I'm following, like immediately. So when she was bedridden, she was taken to the witch doctor. She used to live there, you know, to be given treatment. And when it was hard, she also received Christ and and she got the salvation and she was healed. Mm, and wow. so and so now they decided to follow Christ because okay. yeah. Christ is the answer to yes. everything. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it all went um, that way, it went that way. And now, being that my dad was a bishop, pastor bishop, you know, my dad is a people's person. So my dad used to host so many people. We used to host many people from our from our village, um, the, the congregation, the members, who maybe had relatives who could not go or further the education because of one reason or another. Maybe after sitting uh, for KCPE, KCSC, my dad would just accommodate them take them because my dad also was a mechanic and oh. he had his mechanic me, oh. me garage mechanic you know. yeah so he would take them and train them at the same time still uh shepherd them oh, because they were still so. church members so he's training them and shepherding them in the, the church same time. yeah yeah um so i remember i was i think in my lower classes if not class four three four there so there's one of our, he was like a distance cousin. Or let me begin with that. The, the, we had an uncle. So he's, he was an uncle, but kind of a distant uncle on the side of my dad. So he was also hosted, of which even later on he, he, he wedded, you know, in our church. But now before that, he used to love us so much because he used to, he come to Kisumu from home and then he, he was employed in Kisumu. So he would come to our house at times take us out. You see the way your kids and then you have an uncle who takes you out. And then I remember one night, my parents don't even know this. There's a night, um, he can, because we had two bedrooms. So my dad, my parents had a bedroom and we also had our bedroom. And even before I reached there, I remember I used to be a very prayerful child and I used to love Christ so much. So uh, the way my parents used to pray, I would also pray. And I will always ask God to protect me. And I want to believe that um, the grace of the Lord was actually upon me. Because right now, if I flash back what used to happen, I'm like, if it, if it were not God, I mean, I don't know what, to, what kind of story I would be telling today. So I was sleeping just in the middle of the night, I, I, I believe. And I, and, I, and I had strong hands. Strong hands because I was used to sleeping with my with my with my hand in between my thighs. So I when I when I woke up when I thought I was dreaming and I was struggling in my dream, come it was real. So at my uncle who came and he was trying to remove to remove my hand from from in between my legs because apparently my mind later on told me that he wanted to. To, to rape me or okay he says should I say sexually molest yes. yeah molest me so because my mind was able to know that this is wrong yes oh, wow. because when I woke up and I, and I found that it's my uncle then I'm like what is he doing here at this you know in the middle of this night why me so and then during that time when I just woke up I think he he kind of just developed fear because my our bedroom and our father's and our parents bedrooms were just next to so he ran away 
So um, he kept on trying that, but something very funny, I never shared with my parents. Yeah. Reason, I don't know. Uh, also, I think we, we also, the society back then was set up in a way that, you know, sharing that would look like, I, I don't know. What, like you're lying. Yeah. This yeah. is your uncle. What are yeah, you saying? Yes. Yeah. So he tried and then I think it, it, it just reached a point. He gave up until he waited. In fact, I, I was one of the flower girls in his wedding. I was because he requested me to be, he asked my parents for me to be a flower girl because he loved me so much. During during the day, he'd take me out, buy for me sweets. Uh, during uh, holidays, he would take us out, buy for us things. He would take us to the lift, you know, yeah. and experience the lift. And that's what I'm saying, the people whom you know who are very close to you, even if you have a family and you have a girl child, the people, even the people whom you trust so much, who are close to your kids, be very keen because you never know you never know the devil on a similar you know you fixing it too yeah and i also remember we had we were told that it was a distance cousin simply because we were coming from the same area you know back in shards so there's a there's a time it was just a, around that period almost the same within two years of my life so it was also at night and i was sleeping just like kawaida so again i woke up it's like I was struggling for air to breathe because I was so tiny. And now this distance cousin, Kumbi, he came into our bedroom and he was on me. Remark you, I did not even have boobs. Like I was not even a teenager or something. I was a child yeah. and I was struggling. So he was laying on me and he was also trying because he had removed his, his clothes and he was trying to, to access, you know, my parts. So when I woke up and I was struggling to breathe and then by good luck, I found some, you know, some breath and I shouted my dad's name. I just called Baba. And then he jumped down and he went back to where he sleeps because um, we were like five girls and three boys. So uh, that second bedroom was just for girls. And now my brothers were sleeping in the sitting room. So after that, my dad did not hear me scream. So I also just kept quiet because I'm like, so at some point I used to ask myself, is it me or does it happen to my sisters too? Oh, yeah. But we also didn't have that moment of, I think sharing. of sharing. So I wouldn't know whether they would also experience the same, but mostly I felt they were just praying on me because I was the youngest among the girls at that time. And so when he went back, uh, just within the same week or within a span of just two weeks, because he was sleeping now with the boys. Yeah. Now my immediate brother, so my immediate brother and my brother who follows my immediate brother. Yeah. So he tried to sodomize my brother. Yeah. Yeah. And so my brother screamed mm -hmm. and we all woke up. Yeah. At that point now my parents woke up and then my, because my brother was very, was younger than me, thinking plus one or two. So when he was asked what was happening and he explained, it is that moment my dad became so mad. And I, I think I remember him giving him like blows and kicks because you know that immediate reaction. So the following day, he was he was released because my dad could not live with the, yeah, he was told just to pack up his things and leave. Um, and these, these were happening, but just like I've told you, I loved, I loved Christ. I loved, yeah, like I loved Christ so much, and I would also like uh, maybe say, it is the grace because my parents were also born again, and my parents are very prayerful, and I want to believe that the prayers that they they made of us for whatever reason were also covering us, because if it's rape, they would have been successful. But the time my dad comes, everything has happened, and. Um, during the same time, so at some point, my parents felt like they should take us for tuition. You know, this tuition that you take children, maybe to the next door. So we had a neighbor who was also a teacher, and he was also a pastor, but in a different church. He was not married yet, though in the age where he's supposed to have married. So uh, we, we, my parents paid for our tuition there, and he's a person who is very respected in the community. And so it was my family, and I think Two, diff two other families. So we used to go to his house and then he had this um, dining table. So we would just all you know, sit around as he gives us work to do and teaches us. And so during that moment, because he's a person whom like my parents really cherish, like yeah. he's, he's a, 
as he's a, a man of God. Yeah, very, yeah. Re- very respectable. And yeah. even as he walks, you know, uh, your parents can give an example within, mm-hmm. you know, work hard so that you'll be like son. So. so during those moments, there was a time when I was just doing my homework. And because it's a dining table, at some point, I I just felt, Kumbi, he took his leg and he he stepped on the seat where I'm sitting, but he stepped on my private part. So at first, I thought it's a, it's a mistake because I was still in primary. And so I moved and I, and I shut my legs. But this kept on repeating itself until, until I, it, it reached a point, I'm like, now this is intentional. But I could not share with my parents. I always ask myself why. I could not, uh, because I think I was asking myself, like, this is a pastor and he's a teacher. I could not understand why, yeah. So during those moments, normally I say it took the hand of, of the Lord. Yeah, it took the hand of uh, the hand of the Lord. So we just grew up that way. Um, and we thanked God and we went to church and my dad continued being a bishop and my mom was Mama Kanisa during that time. And um, just like I've said, my, my family is a prayerful, you know, uh, family. And at times we'd sit down with my mom, we sing together, we sing the hymns because my mom initially was um, was an SDA. Now she was con- converted into Pentecost, Pentecostal, yeah. But still she would uh, convert us and we sing with the hymn books. Yeah, and, then yeah, and we really sing. loved those moments. Yeah. And my dad was harsh, though he was a bishop, but he was also harsh. Yeah. You understand? Yes. Mm-hmm. So you went through primary school and pretty much that w- those were the challenges. Those but, are... but, but God in his own ways just never allowed it to go, you know, extra or just become what it was meant to be by the devil. The hand of the Lord covered me. Yes, yes. yes. So because that was high school. Did you go through the same in high school? Or when I, when I sat for my KCPE, I passed very well. And being that I was the third one in uh, my family were, were not very well, you know, stable financially. So it found when our first born, I think, was in in Form 4 or something. Our second born was, I think, in Form 2 or Form 3. And then I'm, I've also sat. And then now they could not be able to, you know, to, to pay for my fees. So they asked me to go to a local school, which I said, it's okay. Even though it, it really killed me, I'm like, but I've passed. Why do you want me to go? You know, you at at some point it reaches a point where you ask yourself, why me mm. and why not the others? Okay. Yeah. So you felt like a bit life was a bit unfair. Uh, I've 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 always thought so. Simp- wow. uh, right from when I was, you know, the girl child thing and everything that has been happening. So and and in fact, most of the times I've always shut down. I'm this kind of person who normally just keeps quiet. I just look at things happen. Yeah. And. Uh, Mostly, I don't want to involve myself yeah. unless it's very important because uh, I, I I think that there's much fear that that was in me just growing up. And, okay. Uh, okay. And I'm also an introvert in a way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you would question why me? Why is life unfair? But then you just take it in quietly and move on. Yeah. I All think. Right. God, I think. I think the prayers also. Yeah. Because I remember at I don't remember point I was depressed simply because I, I used to pray. I would just pray and pray, and I, knew, and I knew God was there. Well, how did I know God was there? Because my parents were ministers. Most of the times they would take missions to different counties. And when they came back, my parents used to love sharing about, you know, this, what, how it went down. Maybe if it's my dad who went out for a mission, being that my, my, dad, my dad planted so many churches. And so when he came back, he'd, uh, maybe when it's a mission that he went minus my mother, so I would hear them. I used to love those stories. So when they're telling the stories, I would sit in a corner where I'm able to to, cap, to hear the story. So you tell me, Mom, hey, this number of people gave their lives to Christ. This number of people received healing, you see. So I think that one also built my faith. Yeah, yeah so I, I really love. So and of, my dad is powerful when he preaches. I know because I've seen it because I've been in the church. So I used to admire that, that, that part of him. Yeah, so, um, and then uh, I went to high school. Right. After high school, I went to college. After college, I'm in marriage. Oh, right. <laughs> I remember telling my dad, now uh, there's someone who wants, because according to our culture, 
if you're almost getting married, you tell your parents, we have a guest. There's a guest who is almost coming, please. Yeah. So he's like, but you're so young. What do you mean? Uh, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think I just have to go. Yeah. yeah, so then we reached that moment and then I crossed over, I went to, of course we received blessings, my husband came over and he he did everything he was supposed to do, you know, according to the wedding, uh, to the marriage. So after that, we, I began my family, which we kicked off well. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I also dedicated my family before the hands of the Lord. He was born came. again? He wasn't. Ah. <laughs> okay. Um, what, what do I say? Like his parents, the mom is very devoted. He used to tell me that the dad was also very devoted, but he never used to go to church. And then I remembered the scripture, do not be yoked together with the, with the, with the what? With unbelievers. But now, uh, at that point, I was just, you know, the, the way you're a teenager. Yeah. Okay, there are factors which led me to that. There are factors which led me to that. Maybe some of the contributing factors, factors which I normally say led me to that is the fact that my dad was always harsh. And uh, there are things, no one is perfect, of course. But I always say, and that's why when I got married, I, I sat my husband down and I told him, just make sure you you make your daughters because I have girls, most yeah. of them. Make your girls just believe in themselves. Let them see themselves ah. as very important. Okay, you know? okay. You felt like that missed out in you? Yeah, it All missed right. so much in me. Uh -huh. And uh, I found them in my husband. We started oh, dating when wow. I was very young. Okay. When I when I was still in high school, he was a bit older than me. But the kind of love he showed me I had never experienced anywhere. And he was very patient with me. At some point, when I was when I was when I ran away from home as a teenager, you, you reach that point when when the pressure is too much. At some point, I ran away, though, to my sister's place. And so when he came and met me, instead of, because I was telling him let's elope because mm. it has reached a point. Yeah, it was I'm, too I'm much. fed up. Yeah. And he told me, you know what, families are different. The way my parents raised me is different from the way your parents raised you. And the fact that that happens, maybe your parents did this and this to you, does not mean that they don't love you. It means that they care about you. Yeah. So they care. They care about you. Yeah. So so then we began a family, and then we, oh. we had children. Okay. As as we are still on that thought, just before we end, we we talk about your children, because I know God has graced you, Jessica. You're raising godly children. You know. And you know, I'm, you know, I'm just caught up in that place where, you know, someone else had to come and bring out courage out of you. And I believe that's something you need to talk about when we come back. Maybe you could help a parent or two, you never know. So please stay with us because when we come back, Jessica is going to be continuing to tell, her, uh, tell us more about her story. And also she'll get to the story which I now know about. I'm, I'm actually impressed. This are stories I didn't know. <laughs> You are still on Hope TV where you look and live. We are on Testify and Jessica is just giving us amazing, an amazing story, Jessica, I must admit. And, uh, you know, I just want you to sort of like touch a bit as we continue with your story on, you know, the uh, on parenting, because as I'm saying, and I know you'll talk about this, you're really raising powerful children because I've had an interaction with two or three of them. You know, what are you doing different? Because there's something you said about, you know, just if you're a dad, bring out the best from your children. How harsh was it? And what are you doing differently? Thank you so much. So um, just like I've told you, like way much before during maybe during our time, even though I still see those things, are, you know, happening nowadays, but they're not as much as they used to. Um, because when you, when we grew up, girls, you know, like the traditional stuff, girls were supposed to be belong to their mothers. Yeah. And uh, fathers never really um, valued girl, girl child so much. Mm -hmm. And so I felt by then there's a big part in my life that I missed with my dad, sincerely, yeah. I did. And so growing up and, mm -hmm. and uh, when I had, just like I told you, my boyfriend before marriage, I, I always aspired, like 
to have a husband who val who values all children no matter the sex and so uh, we we had our first two kids are girls and i told my yeah just like i told you before i told my husband make them understand and appreciate you because it will reach a point maybe when they'll have all grown up and they'll be like now what memories do i have with my dad are they good or bad memories you know do they cherish them of course me too i remember some but now like one on one you're my dad you understand yeah. what kind of relationship do we have do you appreciate me do you value me and do you see that now In what you are yes of course yes you do my husband i would say he's literally a full package if Aww. if not 100% uh -huh. like for real because yeah he's really played a role even uh, I remember when I was expecting that from our first, you know, child, he would help me in very many ways. When I, when I uh, delivered our first child for three months, there's nothing I'll do in the house and we didn't have a house there. He was doing literally everything. And uh, he, he really also values family so much that uh, many years, uh, should I say kind of the early years, he would set aside every Saturday was for family. So you just take, you know, as the whole family out, the kids to appreciate. And one thing that I also learned, for, I, I, I got into marriage a bit earlier, simply because he also had these reasons. I remember some point um, he called me and he told me that, you know, in my family, so he also had his, his own struggles. His dad uh, gave birth to them when his dad was a bit older. So they did not really experience or enjoy that, you know, father son. And so he told me that me, I want to have my family when I'm still young and strong so that I'm able to, to be with my kids. And that's now, I bought what he said and I'm like, okay, it makes sense. Wow. And do you, the relationship they now have with your daughters, you love it? Amazing. Wow. Amazing. Okay, so now, Jessica, you've gotten married. You've now begun a family. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so in, in my family, I would just say it's uh, God's grace. We have been well. Of course, families have ups and downs. Yeah. But you pick up and if the, you simply dust and you move on. And one thing I value in a family is communication. I always tell my husband, communication, like communicate anything that you, you feel is important or even not important, but you feel that needs to be known. Let's sit down and communicate. If I see some, somewhere wrong where my husband goes, I simply tell him I don't like this. And I also give him that opportunity to share with me. Because there are some things I might assume that, but they are, you know, maybe pressing on his feelings and stuff. Yeah. But when he's able to communicate, then I'm, I'm able to know that, oh, this is not... Uh, what you thought it was. Yeah, at that times you can do something, thinking that you're doing something better or well. But your other spouse is like, no, what is this? But if you communicate, you're able to understand well. So um, that has really helped us. So God has blessed you with how many children? Four children. All right. How yeah. many daughters? Three daughters and one boy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. It's like you carried the gene. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, t I told my husband, I told my husband, when we had our first, when I had the second girl, I even told the, the, the you know, his family plus the mom, I told him, our genes are girls. Do you have a problem with this? But now, luckily, his family, they are all boys. They never had a girl. So when I gave birth to our first girl, now they were, it's like their first daughter now. Okay. Yeah, so the whole family was happy. Was really happy. Yeah. So, okay, so marriage is doing well, family is doing well, you're growing. Um, are you also growing professionally? Uh, yes, of course. Of course, yes. When I, when, when I moved into marriage, um, I dropped out of college um, and uh, my husband promised me that you just come, we begin a family and then I will take you back to college. So when I delivered, when our child was one year, just like he promised my parents, he took me back to college. And now, yes, after college, I come back and now I'm working and he's also doing his business. And so we just continue like that. And uh, I think when I was, when, when, when you were with two children or the third child, now there's a time my mom called me and she asked me, do you have some time? We were not living really very far away from each other. So I told her, of course, can you come this Saturday? Yes, because Saturdays I never used to go to work. So Hube, she had also called my other sisters. And so we went and we met at our house. Um, 
and then she told us that there's something that is happening and we, we don't we don't because i think mostly my dad communicates to us through our mom yeah, yeah so because now when they shared and then it reaches a point that now it's my mom is telling us the story then we believe of course it's communication trickling down <laughs> yeah it's them so then we sat down and he told us because now before that let me just explain to you what now brought that we have we had a uh, how do we call it one my it found when my dad my mom had been sick my mom had been sick like she had gone to different hospitals and there was no like there, there was nothing that was found everything uh, showed that she's normal but she is sick to a point that she cannot walk she even uh, the, the whole body swollen or swollen and she started turning black you know like if i if i if i really uh, recall it was like a corpse you see a corpse the way you saw a corpse when you mature a fridge that's how my mom was and she was always in pain so it would come at times uh, and then now the mom would also chip in and give her some kenyej dawa which she would take you know the way you you're looking for because like the pain is too much and she would take them but it would just ease the but it would still come back mostly it would happen when they go home when they travel home now when she comes back after 3 days she's not able to stand not that it's something that just like she goes home she comes back the third day she would not stand and then she would pray she would take maybe medicine and then it would ease like that and also remember our first born when she sat for her all levels and then she joined K- Kenya medical training you know uh, institute okay? came to see training college at some point she was also taken ill she was studying for nursing but also her disease could not be diagnosed and uh, during that point uh, she was screaming because she felt like people were walking inside her brain and so after that um at some point when when she healed up because of course with prayers too and now the 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 feet began sw- swelling they would swell like small small swellings but very painful should not walk so those are things i remember now i'm taking you to the story why now this and comes into my mind so my mom t- tells me that my dad he left for the missions like like uh, like always he always goes to preach in our different you know branches of churches out of the county um and now he was preaching in somewhere called Kindu Bay mm-hmm. and when my dad preaches when he's on the altar whether it is a call from the president he will not answer he says god first so um that is now what we we are understanding that he he kept he kept on receiving calls now calls were coming calls were coming in his in his phone but now he gives the assistant pastor deal deal with the tell him I'm preaching I will get back to the person later. So the phone kept ringing ringing. The person communicated, gave him gave him the phone, but the phone kept on ringing. And so he had to answer and tell him I'm still preaching. I will get back to you. So later on at the end of the day, so he looked for the number and he called the number. So when he called the number, the person who received the mail person told him that I'm a witch doctor who was sent to finish you. but because i have not been successful now i have to look for you but who is my dad that one never shakes him no 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 it never sh- like the faith that my dad has is one of the faith you can admire so he told the person okay so what do you want me to do so the person told him i would like to meet you coming weekend come to my to my home and he's like it's okay So then uh when he came back now he shared with my mom and other pastors and um I remember my mom saying that he quoted the scripture because I was asking my mom how how uh, okay fine that he did a shopping so that he takes the to the pastor and I asked my mom why and how my mom said that he quoted the verse there's a verse in the bible which says do not pay a bad with a bad and so that you can defeat evil with doing a good thing So he did a shopping of course after consulting with the pastors and praying and people contributed and he did a shopping and he took his uh, he began the journey over 
So when he reached at the gate, he called the person and he told him that I'm at the gate. So the person went and took him. So when he reached the the, the house, he just carried because he normally carries his hand and, and prays. And he praised the Lord and then he sat down. And he told him, now I'm John Gandhi, the person who me. You said that you wanted to finish, but I'm here. My dad is not afraid. So now this guy started uh, narrating to him. It's a journey that began when we were very young. Remember now I'm married yes. with kids. Now it's, it's when a you're journey. And now he was telling my dad, mm -hmm. the moment he began looking, you know, working in our family, and trying to destroy our family and you know wanting to kill you know my my parents um the story of my sister the story of my mom he told my 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 dad that we have really done very bad things to your wife and i'm really sorry wow yeah he confessed wow. that everything that has been happening to my mom it's because of him and then he confessed to my dad who are these people who are behind this I may, I might not really want to avail it because it's not, I know it's a public platform, but they are just our relatives. Yeah, relatives. Those whom uh -huh. we have been close like this, that you can uh, never, ever imagine they would even it think. Uh -huh. Was it out of envy or was it because your dad was doing ministry? Was it? Um, if I look at it, it's because uh, they wanted to be up there yeah, and us to be down. Wow. But it did not begin just right then yeah it began when we were very young okay as young as when i was in primary so that story when your mom is telling you in that meeting now everything is adding up very much and now you're able to say oh this oh i remember this oh i remember and then my brother oh and then my sister you see mm -hmm. um but just like i've told you because my my parents always prayed They've always gone for fasting, prayer and fasting. And I believe it is the God they have been praying to who yes. really, you know, who really protected us. Uh, and so at that point, there's, there's some anger that really gets into you like, did you say it's this person? And then like, why? Because these, these are person, these, these are people that you know. These are your relatives, like your blood relatives, you know. Yeah, so then it went it went uh, to that point and then he told my dad, normally when I do, he's this person who has a mirror, according to what what you were told, he has a mirror and when he does his things, he he brings your image on the mirror and then he works on you from the mirror. So he's saying that anytime he, he tries to bring my dad on the mirror, my dad comes, he only sees the back and he sees my dad carrying a Bible. So he's not able to reach. No, before that, no, he sees my dad in the front carrying a Bible and there's fire that protects him. And whenever he tries to bring my mom, now my mom comes hiding in front of my dad. Now he sees the behind of my dad with a Bible. Wow. Now he's not able to reach. So it's like the faith of my dad was also protecting Covering, my mom. Yeah. yeah. And you see the word of God also in the book of Job talks about, you know, the enemy telling God mm. the reason why he couldn't reach to Job mm. is because there was a hedge mm. of protection around. Exactly. So, mm. wow, it's yeah. good to know yeah. that someone on the other side would actually confess yeah he would say wow. he confessed uh -huh. and uh, so my dad just listened and everything and it reached a point where now the witch doctor told my dad there was a point when they traveled home because anytime remember anytime they travel home my dad my mom comes back or they come back my mom is always dying so when the last the last moment now before now this call they went home and uh Kumbe, the witch doctor had given now this relative some medicine or, or some which had it's gone question wherever so that uh because i remember our mom telling us a story that now when they went home this issue of people fighting for boundaries now when they went home they found that uh, the person had had increased their boundary to squeeze our land and now when they were asked they said that that is their portion but my dad is like, no, you're wrong. Whatever you've done, it's okay, you can have the part, but whatever you're saying is a lie. So then when they went home and my dad and my mom was home, so there's a time my dad traveled to the to the market, or should I say our small town, and my mom remained. So he went and called my mom, Shemeji. At you come at you've been saying that this is your your boundary and we took it. So I want you to to take this now the the, the plantations that are normally used to 
to create the boundary. Take them, remove them from there and return them where they're supposed to be. Now, my mom, because she's also a wise woman, she's also in Christ, she told her, uh, she told him that uh, issues about land, no woman ever comes in. If it's land, it is you and your bra and your brother. So you better call your brother, tell him to do that. But me, I th I'm sorry, I'm out of it. So the witch doctor was confirming that if my mom would have just removed that and returned to that boundary, because that was him, he is the one who sent now that person to go and do that. So if my mom would have done that, she would have just fallen. You see the way he says it's a heart attack. She would have just fallen there and that is how she was going to die. Now the spirit of the God, of the Lord, told her no, don't do that. And then she also called her mom. And my mom told her, no, don't do that. Wow. Yeah, so those are, those, are, those are very, you know, they're, they're very deep things that we might not really be able to understand. But we thank God for the revelation because what if the person died and you wouldn't have known? And we also thank God because now it reached a point when my dad used to go to that home and you're asking my mom, why does daddy still go to this home? And he's still quoted. Me, I, I have nothing bad with them. I mean, I would still go. So he still goes. And then it reached a point because we held on, on to it personally. Like this. And then it reached a point. I said, ah, yeah. yeah, I would not hold these people like forever. So I just confessed and I told God uh, because these ones were a revelation just to confirm that your power has been with us. And it is not now that we are now going to be angry. And it is not now that we are now going to, you know, to maybe to, to fear or what, because you have protected us all through when we were young until now. And we are now, it is now very evident we have seen it. So I said, the Lord has yeah. been protecting. And you know, most of the times we never see, we never get the point we never not everyone in life gets the opportunity to see what god has been protecting them from so you guys actually had a privilege because if god could actually open all of our eyes mm -hmm. to see the accidents he prevented to mm -hmm. see the curses that he prevented from coming our way you know that is such a privilege for your family mm -hmm. jessica and now i understand and uh, i want to talk about your job because as a close up because uh as w when we met here um <laughs> you are not doing the job that you're doing right now. So I don't want to talk so much about it. I want you to tell us yeah. how, how the promotion came about. I was almost moving to that. Thank you. Well, so I've, been, I've always been this professional woman, mm -hmm. of course, with a family. I've always worked um, with different organizations. That was back, way back in Nyanza. And... Um, so I've been working, in, just like I've said, in organizations, different ones. You know, this contract, contract, because I'm a community development profession, professional. Yeah, so then it is, it's not, I just came to realize that it, it might. And if you're lucky, that maybe you have not really reached there, then you should really thank God. Because it reached a point now when my contact ended, but I was expecting my last one. And uh, during that time, there were these news about uh, house helps, house helps mistreating children. And so when my contact ended, I said, I'll not look for another job. I want to take care of my, ch my child until she clocks two years. Now, uh, now I can take her to a day center where at least she's able to verbalize anything that happens to her. Yeah, so during that time, <clears throat> mm, so I was home. And now I ventured into business. So I was doing business I'm, I, as I wait to, to look for a job later on, maybe in two years. So it is then that we reached up. It, during that time, we lost our father-in-law. No, it began with the, my brother-in-law. We lost our brother-in-law, who is the firstborn to my husband. And then later on, we lost our father-in-law. So much of the money which I thought I would, vent, I would continue to do business went into oh, the, 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 the plans, yeah. the burial and stuff, the, the funeral plans. Mm. And so I was back to kind of square one. Then I'm like, I'm a mother, I can't sit, I have children. So I have to look for a job. So um, I tried to, uh, playing for jobs, but during that time there were no, no, no job openings. There were no match. So then I decided to come to Nairobi and look for a job. I didn't really choose, but before that, I was, I was uh, with uh, Deliverance Church Kisumu. And so we had a Daughters of Faith uh, conference. It was a three-day conference, so we went there. So we went to pray, and then I told God, coming from here, I have to, you have to give me something to do. I know it is hard, 
but you have to give me something. So I came there with faith. I was very pregnant with faith. And so when I went home, um, I packed, I think after two days or so, and I came to Nairobi. And I told myself, I won't mind what kind of job I'm going to learn for this, for the beginning, because I know I'm a professional and I'll get a job. So then I landed the 911, the 911 job. When I landed the job and I shared with my husband, he was like, you're joking. Are you joking? Ah. I'm like, how can you? I mean, you've worked with Cambridge CDC, you've worked with the, with the others. So he's telling me the organizations. And then you're telling me you're now working as a security officer. I'm like, yes, I'm working with that because I want to get cash, which will help me facilitate, you know, my looking for a job, you know, how to make my, how to print my CVs and all that. But he was really against it. Yeah. Uh, but now when I remember, what I left behind at that point, we were now kind of suffering yeah. <laughs> because now we were so much done. I, I lived a life that I've never even seen my parents live. Mm. And I asked myself, why? why? I mean, but I believe it's only God who has the answer. Yeah. And so when I got the 911 job, um, I said, I knew that I would not be there for long. Yeah. So I told myself, um, I want to do my best here so that by the time I'm out of here, these people will remember me. I know I'm a professional, but I'm leaving that for now. And let me sit on this seat and uh, let me work. And then I was planning to look for a job in January. In January. Remember that was in September. September, yeah, in September. When I, when I got the job with 911, September, October. October, yeah. So when I got the job there, so I said, let me just do my best. I mean, I knew I would not be there for like more than six months. That one I knew, I was very certain about. And so I decided to do, and then I didn't have much. You see, we didn't have much. So I would walk from Valley Road to Imaradaima. It's far. I mean, something I have never experienced in my life. And I didn't have, um, and, and, and what drove me, it's my children. I'm like, I mean, a mother can do anything for their children. I'm like, now. I have a child with them sitting for, for her exams. And I have this young one. And I always say, this young child, I don't know, she came, you know the way parents would always say, she came with a bad luck. Me, that's what I used to say. That child, there's nothing she ever experienced mm -hmm. than, you uh, know, that like the, the other rest, had. yeah. Like, no no food, no what, anything. It was hard. There was nothing good that yeah. she really enjoyed. Yeah. And by the time I was leaving her, she was one, one year and four months, which I've never done. You're always leaving them after two years. I always, I always, no, no, no. I always, I always leave them after three months because I used, to, I normally uh, go to work, but they remain with the dad. But I come back every weekend because I work with this community work. I go work in the community, then come back. Yeah. So, but now that was like, you see, it's, it's not that you've willingly left your child because you're going to work. It's because you've you've been forced by a, by a condition or a situation. Yeah, so then I came and I found that. So I would just walk, but I would pray. One day. I would sing mm. on the way. Mm. And I would pray, you know. Wow. And something very funny, I mean, just the way God does his things, we can never really understand. So um, after the training of 911, we were supposed to be deployed to different areas. And then being that they said that the best students will be will be deployed here at Sitam. There was that it was a new assignment. So I was amongst the, the best students. And then I was brought here. And then I was supposed to be taken to Tika Road and I talked to my supervisor because I heard it is so far. And I knew at some point I would miss transport. So I asked to be taken close to town. So I was taken here. So then I was placed the fact that I was taken to church was was yeah, it was it was just, it meant something so to me. So much to you. So much to me. Even though on Sundays, I never used to have any offs. So my offs used to fall on a Thursday. So I told myself, on Thursday, I'll be printing my papers, go and look for a job. But on, yeah, but on Sunday, I will just, because now we are here, you're not even able to leave your assignment to go to the church. So you can just maybe tune in and pray wherever you are. But what was very funny or very interesting, there was those midweek prayers that begin from six. Uh, it was Tuesday by then, before it was changed to Wednesday. And then we had the Saturday prayers, which yeah. were also beginning uh. at 6. So I took advantage of those times. So after changing from work, I go to the Tuesday midweek service. And my fellow um, security guards were like, no, this is a joke. How can you 
because I used to be work, uh, I think I would be the first one every morning. So I would be at work by 5.30. And then they are, they, are, they are asking themselves, how do you come here as security? You get to work at 5.30 instead of going home at 6. Now you get into another service. So they will not really understand. But if you know what you want and you know that it is only God who can give it to you. It doesn't matter what somebody says. So I would go and I will, we would just pray and sing. And I would just, you know, cry in my heart. I would tell God, I know this is not my portion, but I know you're going to, to open another door. And I trusted God for that. So I would go and also on Saturday, uh, I would also go in the, in the service. The Saturday was created for the people who are not able to attend Sunday. Sunday, yeah. So, oh my goodness. And then another very funny thing, Hope Media had this uh, staff, uh, staff devotion. devotion. And then it reached a point one time when I was up there, JP told me, why don't you go for the devotion? I'm like, I'm a security guard, I can't leave the desk. He said, leave those people for, for God will take care. Yeah. He didn't know what, what he meant. Like he didn't know how much he touched my heart. Wow. The fact that he gave me that opportunity to go and fellowship and have that devotion. Wow. I, I did it gladly, you know. So we would go and I would just cry to God. I'm telling him, please, just open for me another door. Yeah. And, and at what point, Jessica, because I actually remember, I, I'm sure maybe you don't remember me, <laughs> but I remember where you were situated and you were just, you know, like right at Hope TV where uh, the way that is leading to uh, Hope Media's manager, manager's way, as well as the it's like big offices around there, you know? I took advantage of that. Wow. So I, what, what, how did that turn around come and how did you I use tell, that moment? I tell you, God mm -hmm. can place you somewhere strategically. Yeah, yeah. Strategically. Because now when I was there and I was planning to look for a job in January and I had not done anything about media. So my mind was not even in Hope Media. Yeah. So I told myself, let me look for time and go to talk to the managers because I was uh, situated where you, you, when you, when you, you know, close to the HOM's office, close to other managers' offices. And then now something uh, came into my mind and told me now this is strategic. Now I printed my CVs and my, and my cover letters. And, uh, and uh, I prayed before I did that. And I told God, now I'm going to, dev to drop this to the managers. Help me to use them to find a job. Uh, the person I began with was JP because he was directly opposite, because he was sitting just in front of me. So I went there and I asked, uh, be no, before I went, I could not just go because I didn't have access. And of course I could not go without his permission. So one day he was coming out, I asked him, JP, could you please create some time for me I'd like to? To see for just two minutes so he told me yes so when he told me yes i went and i, and I told him these are my papers if you because i know you're a manager so the same thing i was telling to all the managers if you get somewhere you get to hear about please you can tell me or you can find my papers and i will go for interviews i did the same to lucy i did the same to mr maug was the last person the hom so when uh before i did to mr maug even before i went he's the one who called me one time, and I would say it is the spirit of the Lord. So one morning he came, and the way I normally open for him the door. So when he came down and he was going up, and then I heard him call me. It didn't click in my mind that maybe it's something about that. So I just went, yes, sir. And then he told me, can you please sit? I'm like, I was even afraid to sit because I'm in uniform. Because we are told you have to respect, you know. And so he asked me about my family, and I told him. And as I was telling him about my family, I broke down. We could not talk much. So when I broke down and I asked him, sir, can I go, please? I will see you later. And then he's like, yes. So when I went to Nikasema, where ni mechoma? Then emotions just came over me and I could not talk. And then later on, when we met, now he asked me for my papers and I gave him. Then he was just going through my papers and like, hey, umbasa, umbasa, and I just think I'm like, no, sir, I've just tried. So it found when uh, this, um, the receptionist had just resigned. Yeah. And then I, I remember uh, the, one of the managers telling me that when they sat in the manager's meeting, um, they proposed, when they were asked about me, everyone was like, yes. Everyone proposed me, I'm like, what have I done? And so that is how I got the job. And uh, I really think, um, just like they've said, God can place you somewhere and he can use somebody 
in a way just to give glory to his name allow me to give god all the glory and honor because he placed people strategically in my life who now came and i'm here i didn't know i didn't know one day i would be in a media house i didn't know one day even my child would be featured you know in a, on, in a radio would be featured on a television but i believe just like when you grow up the lord has a purpose for just like he says in um uh, uh what 29 Jeremiah 29 that I have great plans for you I have a great plans for your future you might look at yourself and you small yourself you belittle yourself but the Lord God if you trust in him he has a great plan for you so I would encourage people don't give up in whatever situation you're passing through just trust God with it it doesn't matter how long it takes just trust God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And mm -hmm. you know, Jessica, you're really courteous. When you were doing the security uh, job, you like you you. There's just an extra way you would do it that you know. Not I've not seen such service. You know, so I'm not surprised that you know people backed you up for the promotion, and here you are. And as you're saying about God strategically placing someone, I'm reminded of Mordecai. He was just a watchman. In, in the in the in the cities and from there god used him to save the king's life from there he got a promotion you know it's amazing how sometimes we take these strategic small places and not knowing that actually it's the next direction so wow maybe maybe just to finish up jessica mm -hmm. maybe as you're speaking right now someone is in a very bad place and they're almost giving up they're despairing Maybe they're in that place where they feel, I don't deserve to be a God. And I quote that because it could be other jobs, you know. I don't deserve to be here, not knowing that God could actually use it for his glory. Maybe if you could just look into that camera, not just encourage them, but I want you to pray for them. Because I believe that grace is here. And you can pray someone into, first of all, understanding that it's, it doesn't last forever. And also into understanding that God will use that into something big something big will blossom out of it you know so maybe just pray with us jessica as we also uh, finish up okay, thank you let's believe and pray father lord we come before you this moment in time we thank you jehovah because this opportunity was created by you mighty redeemer we thank you for each and every life jehovah those who feel that they are down and even those who feel that they have lost hope in their lives my father we thank you for them jehovah your word says that we give thanks in every situation every condition mighty redeemer we thank you for everything that we are going on jehovah that brother that sister that woman that man that youth jehovah who has lost hope they have lost hope father but we know that you are there we want to remind them that you are their mighty redeemer and that you have great plans for their lives just like you said in Jeremiah 29. My Father, we know that you will never forget about them and you will never forsake them. May you come through for them, Jehovah. It doesn't matter how long it takes, but we ask you to give us hope in our hearts to keep on trusting you in every situation, mighty Redeemer, that Father, at the end of it all, we may, we may be able to see, Jehovah, that which you planned, Jehovah, for us. And Father, all the glory and honor will come to you, mighty Redeemer. We know that you have great plans for us and we are looking forward to that, mighty Father. We will not tire we will not give up we will not we will not give up jehovah but we will keep on looking up to you jehovah lord because we know that it is only in you that there is an answer all the questions that we have it is only in you that we can find the answer may you stretch your hand upon us and may you your grace and mercy cover us for it is in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray and believe amen amen, amen. thank you so much such a touching story Thank you so much for listening, you know, and in case you're wondering, Jessica is actually the mother to the daughter you always see uh, on Hope FM or Hope Media Keshas. Every time she comes to sing, she comes to pray for us. You know, she, she's just an inspiration. This woman is raising godly children and we glorify God for the grace that is upon you, Jessica. Mm -hmm. So thank you for making time. Thank you for tuning in. Have a Merry Christmas. You could... Merry Christmas. People. Merry Christmas yeah. and a happy new year. Oh, yes. Bless you so much. This is Hope TV where you look and leave. Shout out to Tulivu Cafe. They have been amazing to us. We give glory and honor uh, to God for them. You want to come here? Very beautiful place. Sitam Valley Road is a place to find them. You have been with me, Maria Makao Mundi. Have a Merry Christmas and a blessed new year. Amen.